final lecture in this module on international markets, we'll just talk about entering into emerging markets or developing markets, developing countries. Um, countries that don't have a full, um, a fully developed economy, there are still um, lots of uh, relatively low income uh, people there, maybe not the uh, the same kind of uh, available infrastructure in larger countries. But at the same time, in many cases, they are the future of the, the economy. So how does one decide to go and enter into a marketplace in, in a, um, one of the uh, outlying countries of South America or Africa or Asia or something like that? Um, well, first of all, you have to realize that you're going to be competing on low cost because people just don't have the excess resources to buy the higher cost items. They're not interested in differentiation so much as something that they can get at a low cost. So typically, you want to try to make sure that your business model adjusts to, uh, to, to the local circumstances. You want to try to make the local market match the best you possibly can the way you do business elsewhere. But it's hard to control the market, so you also have to be uh, familiar with and comfortable with how the marketplace develops in that country. Um, you do want to try and shape it, though, to try and take advantage of some of your strategic positions globally. And you also want to generally be weary of entering markets where you have, uh, it's just too hard to, uh, to compete. There's too many local conditions and the like that might make it difficult. Um, one of the things that you might want to do is take a look at how the market develops in that particular country and try to take advantage of some of the areas where distribution is a problem. It might be local distribution network problems. If you could overcome those, you might be able to position your goods and services into marketplaces where others others can't quite get to. Um, you might want to use uh, knowledge of local customer needs and the like to try and develop uh, a unique position. Um, you might want to try to develop some things that also create uh, wages and salaries of people locally, so local local activities, hiring local employees, so there's more, uh, they become more familiar with your company, um, becomes part of the community, but also they have some uh, wages and salaries that they can spend on various types of, of, of products that you offer. Uh, also acquisition, joint venture, those kinds of rapid growth strategies can be helpful. Um, and you also could take advantage of by transferring some knowledge and goods and services or knowledge and capabilities from other markets into the developing markets. And from those developing markets, bring in knowledge and uh, local awareness of the current situation in order to, um, to be as successful as possible in those markets. There's all the political risks we talked about before. Oftentimes in developing markets, they're even more significant. But at the same time, being there if a, if a marketplace starts to take off can give you advantages in the longer term, so a long-term strategy. Something to keep in mind, though, um, profitability in the, these kinds of marketplaces can be a long time coming uh, and very difficult to manage. And it can also be quite uh, volatile in terms of that. So you have to adopt your models to local conditions. You can't assume you know what's going to happen. Um, and be ready to be flexible and to make changes uh, relatively quickly. Entering into emerging markets is a part of the general global strategy, but to summarize the overall module, there are many opportunities in the developed world. Emerging markets, developing countries are also possible, and of course, many develop developing countries ultimately become very good places to compete. So having your hand in in those places are important. But generally, you look at the overall global market. You position your strategy. You position your resources and parts of the value chain in places that give the best advantage. You make sure you have a good portfolio because exchange rates shift, and you might want to move things around, you can move profits around, take advantage of government regulations and tax benefits, and sell in various markets. Generally, either with a global strategy where you try to sell one thing globally, or in a transnational or multi-domestic strategy where you take advantage of customer needs and make sure you satisfy local demand and local customers. International strategy is distinctly different than business strategy in one country that we've talked about in prior lectures, but it can really greatly expand the possibilities and the opportunities for being successful in business. This, with that, we'll conclude this module. 
And we'll talk more in, the, in future modules about other sorts of strategies, corporate strategies, that also involve more complex types of decision making than you have in simply trying to run a business and grow your customer share. You also have to manage a portfolio of businesses globally. We'll talk about that in our next module. Thanks for this discussion, and we'll see you in the next.